the return of the no food bowl because we are going to be doing a teardown of another liquid cooler today. This time it's the Enermax TR4 LickTech cooler that's used for Threadripper. The reason we're taking this apart is because it's the first liquid cooler of its kind to really exist purpose built for Threadripper. And as such, it's got a larger cold plate. The question is that once you're inside of the actual pump housing, does the cold plate protrude into micro fins across the entire plate or just over the die coverage area? Have they repurposed the pump from a smaller unit? That's what we're going to be trying to answer today. But before we get into that, this coverage is brought to you by iFixit.com and their ProTech Toolkit. iFixit is refreshing their ProTech Toolkit in time for the holidays. You can find a link in the description below to the ProTech Toolkit and other toolkits that iFixit sells. We find the ProTech and Essentials kits to be the most useful for DIY enthusiasts. Okay, so we've already benchmarked these. We benchmarked the 240 and the 360 previously. They perform pretty well, actually. And now we just want to learn what's inside and if the pump housing has been repurposed. So to do that, it's got Torx heads in the entire cold plate, all around the cold plate. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten of them. And... Uh, also, we've got two large Torx screws here, which I think are basically fill ports. Now, these are more meant for the RMA department than for people like us, but it's nice to have access to them if you wanted to prolong the life of the cooler by uh, refilling it once there's some permeation. So first, we need to remove the mounting plate, which is done. And then we've also got Torx screws on the top for the LED plate, the name plate. I'm not sure when we're going to have to remove those. And let's, I'm going to start with the fill port or what I think is the fill port because I want to just empty as much of the liquid as possible. That's always the biggest pain with doing these is the fact that they have liquid in them. So uh, we'll start there, try and get as much out as we can and then go through the rest. The kit that I'm using right now, I think is the 64 bit kit, not 64 bits like computing, but 64 as in that's how many bits there are in there. You know what? Let's just remove one of these. This, I think, is a TR20 that we're using right now. So that's pretty massive. First time I've had to use that one. And, okay, that's been removed. So I'm thinking liquid's just going to kind of come out at this point. Or is it blocked off more than that? Did you see a drop come out? Yes. Yes, okay. That's all you got. Oh, Intermax and Cooler Master are the two that use a uh, like a neon toxic green co colored uh, what I would assume is propylene glycol. That's what everyone else uses. Typically it's a clear fluid, but they might just add a dye to it. Oh, there we go. That one came out with a stopper or with an O-ring. Okay, that should, that should help. Nice. Uh, toxic green. If this comes out of you, there's a problem. <laughs> That's, that can't be it. There's more for sure. All right, I think we pretty much got it. Okay. I'm going to put it down in a bunch more. It's going to come out. Almost exactly 200 milliliters. So if you're going to completely drain and refill one of these yourself. It's looking like about 200 milliliters. You'll probably want to fill a little over that because I had a couple drops miss and there's probably some more in there. So maybe call it like 225 or something to be safe. But it should be pretty obvious once it's full anyway. Uh, okay, so I'm going to plug those back up and then start taking the cold plate off and then we'll move these again if we have to. It's possible that they need to come out for disassembly. So let's just dump this into the larger one for now. And now for the cold plate. TR9, I think is what we want. Uh, pretty good, maybe a 10. Let's try a 10. It's 20 for the big ones on the sides. 10 right here. Might need a bit more torque than that. No, we're good. Hopefully this is easier than the Ace Attack ones. The Ace Attack ones are a nightmare to get the cold plate off because they're so torqued to prevent leakage and they use, well, they might not use fewer screws, but the placement of the screws and the torque plus the softness of the screws means that it's very easy to strip them 
And at that point, you basically have to drill it out. But this looks like it's assembled in a way that you should be able to actually use or service this if you wanted to. Uh, I don't think they encourage it or suggest it, but it's probably for RMA purposes. And then that benefits us as well. Wow, that's a very wide channel. Rubber gasket over it, that's what that clear thing is. Or maybe a silicone, that's like a rubber. So we've got a gasket and discoloration is a little interesting. I'm not sure why it's discolored. You can see the little bit, maybe, maybe someone with more uh, materials experience can tell me what that is and why it happens and if it matters the discoloration we're seeing. A little bit of yellowing on the edges though of the copper. So yeah, copper cold plate. Is that just like, there's like some gunk in there. A little bit of gunk, but nothing that's gonna really affect performance in a meaningful way. That uh, gray stuff. But the interesting thing, it is actually more or less the full size of the cold plate. That's not what I was expecting, to be honest. I thought it was going to be like a repurposed microfin array from one of the smaller plates, which would cut off around there. So it does actually take the full surface area for the most part. You've got channeling on the sides for liquid flow. The gasket helps with, well, actually, I guess the channeling on the sides is not for that. That is, it is for the, oh, no, you get some liquid through there. But it's mostly for accommodating the gasket which helps with increasing pressure of the liquid moving through the micro fins so that I can get through there more quickly and deal with any potential impedance from things like these uh, gunked up fins, which I'm not sure why they're like that, but let's take a look at this. Okay, so you can see part of the impeller in there I think the rest of it's inside the rest of the housing. And we've got in and outlets over here. And then the uh, microfins obviously in here with more of our discoloration on that side. So let's, uh, let's see if we can take apart the rest of this and gain access. I don't, this looks kind of like a machined block. So maybe we have to go in through the top, which isn't gonna be a different size. Break into this one. Yes, TR6 is what we want. Does that smell just from the chemical? <laughs> you smell that, right? Top of the letters toward the cable. Okay, top of the letters toward the cable. I will not remember that. Here we have the PCB, obviously. So this thing, this isn't just me trying to advertise for them. Uh, we've had these kits since iFixit first ran ads with us. And I don't know if this comes from them. I think it, yeah, it does. Cause this has a magnet icon in it. So I only just discovered this like a week or two ago. It's just a small magnet. Kind of like you get those magnets on a stick for your car and this is the first time I've gotten to use it, which is always amusing to actually have a use for a new tool. Nice, okay, sweet. So there's the, the impeller is gonna be in here. Oh yeah, I can actually see the impeller now, cool. We'll get to that in a second. And got the PCB, which is controlling your LEDs, uh, the, the RPMs. RPM temperature response, stuff like that, if they have that in here. And a big O-ring in there, which against, uh, so against the O-ring, you can see it's bracing on this bit of the housing, the plastic shell around the impeller. Magnetic. There you go, that looks familiar. So it's magnetic, it's polarized as all, all pumps are. Uh, you pull it off and there is 
the Impeller, which actually looks pretty similar to stuff that Dynatron makes. I don't know actually who Enermax's supplier is for this. This is leading me to think maybe Dynatron, but I'm not positive. Pretty similar to the old Dynatron stuff from Antec 1250s, though. Uh, so yeah, there's there's our Impeller. It's got some grooves on the outside where you can see basically the blades. So you can see the grooves where it's pulling and pushing the liquid. Got some more in there. So in this, in the current state of this liquid cooler, we can actually reassemble this and still use it, which is really cool because there's another content idea there. Um, typically, when we disassemble these things, it requires destroying stuff. And this one, if I wanted to, I, I could get under here, but I don't want to, there's no point. It's hot glued on. You can actually see the hot glue around the edges. So I'd have to start pulling it apart further. I don't want to break the bond on these cables. And underneath, all you're going to see is the electromagnet. Um, you can actually see some of the copper down in there. So that's, it's just an electromagnet in there. It's nothing special. We've shown them before. So we're going to stop there for this cooler. Uh, let's make sure there's nothing else on here that is worth seeing. No, not really. This is just, I, I don't know if, I'm not sure what they used to make this housing. Here you go. If someone, uh, someone else can tell me. For this housing, does this look like machined CNC, uh, die cast? You know, what's the appropriate term for this? So if you look at it, it's pretty much a unibody, I think, for the most part. Um, yeah. So it's, I mean, it's either way, whatever the approach is, and I'd love to learn more about it. Uh, the assembly is pretty high quality. We already tested it for thermals, performs well, noise, uh, noise normalized performance is good. And now you can see how it all goes together. Um, and other than that, I mean, yeah, this would be trivial to refill. So that's pretty much it for the Enermax LickTech cooler. Um, <laughs> actually, I could refill this with its own liquid, I guess, if we wanted to. It's a bit contaminated, but from going in a bowl that's been used before. But we could do it if we wanted to, because this thing, uh, I'm actually kind of excited to try and refill and use, because we every time we've taken apart the AS Attack ones, you could refill them, but it'd be a real pain to do it, and it's probably not really worth it. Uh, most of the time, we've had to drill apart the cold plate as well, because those screws strip so easily. But this thing came apart easily. Uh, there is a little bit of stuff in the micro fins, but it's only a couple spots. And it kind of looks like thermal paste. So I don't know it, how much of that got in there just from me handling it, because I always have thermal paste on my hands versus how much was in there already. Uh, but yeah, if you needed to service this unit and refill it or something, it'd be pretty easy to do so. Uh, and the micro fins extend across the whole surface area of the plate. So that's really cool too. So that's all for this one. As always, you can go to patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly, or you can go to store.gamersnexus.net to pick up a shirt like this one or one of our GN stickers. And again, thank you to ifixit.com for coming back on as an advertiser. You can check their link in the description below to find all the tools we used here today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time.